please, will you just hear me? Mulder, the truth is out there. But so are lies. Thank you. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wildcast. Hope you're all doing well out there. In this video, we're going to be continuing to look at the physical evidence against Ghislaine Maxwell in part seven of our Undisputed Evidence Against Ghislaine Maxwell series. Now, in the last video, we looked at the uh, physical evidence that comes from the message pads that were left at uh, Ghislaine's and uh, J.E.'s house. Uh, we looked at some of the incriminating evidence against J.E., Maxwell, and also Jean-Luc Burnell. Now, today we're going to be starting off with, the, with what people call the Little Black Book, which is a book of names basically just names uh, and contact information for a whole bunch of people. It's literally, there's more than a thousand names in this um, document. And uh, I, I, this is not something I'm going to spend too much time on because there's literally no legal value here. From a legal perspective, the, your name being on this book means next to nothing. And that's why no legal expert really focuses on this because um, your name appearing on this book doesn't mean you committed any crime. There has to be other um, corroborative evidence that proves that you've committed a crime. Now, one person um, that's actually gone to jail, not as a result of this, but as a result of other much more convincing evidence is, of course, Jean-Luc Burnell. Now, as you guys can see here, Jean-Luc Burnell's name is actually in this book because uh, he was somebody who was a close confidant of J.E. Uh, and he's on uh, page eight here. And uh, he's among a lot of other people that are in this book. Now, let me explain this book and why it doesn't have that much legal teeth, right? So people, rich people uh, congregate and they go to parties together and um, they give each other their contact information to, you know, go to parties, do business deals, you know, go to uh, house parties and galas and dress up parties and costume parties. This is what rich people do. So the fact that Ghislaine Maxwell and uh, JE had this book filled with all these people's names doesn't is not incriminating evidence. Like I said, you have to have some, something more to actually put people in jail or claim that they committed some crime. So that's why this is not very interesting to me at all. A lot of people who are not familiar with the legal system made a big deal about this. This is a good start if you want to build a case against somebody, if you have some other evidence, outside evidence that you can put together with the fact that this person's name is in JE's book, then great. And, you know, obviously we should do that. So so uh, in that vein, let me show you guys uh, uh, who are some someone I think is actually guilty and was knowledgeable of uh, J.E.'s crimes. And that person is, of course, Eva Dubin. So here is an email, the infamous email, where Eva Dubin talking about how she is perfectly fine with uh, J.E. around her children. OK, so let's read this. Dear Officer Sloan, we are the parents of three children. And she mentions her kids names here. They are all under the age of 18. I am aware that J.E. is a re uh, registered sex offender and had uh, uh, pled guilty to soliciting for prostitution and procuring a minor for prostitution. I am 100% comfortable with J.E. around my children. I, Ava Dubin, am an internist and have known Jeffrey for over 20 years. Please feel free to, free to contact us at this number. So that's a person that I consider to be guilty, and I don't know why any, nobody's going after her. So her name is actually not in here, but her um, but her husband's is. So the Dubins are listed here, or, or the, the male Dubin, the, the husband, uh, Dubin, Glenn Dubin, is here. But for whatever reason, um, uh, uh, Ava Dubin is not here, which is kind of weird to me. But anyways, uh, my point stands, and obviously, here is our Prince Andrew, uh, Duke of York. Now, there's outside extraneous evidence that shows that um, Andrew maybe did something when it comes to, you know, Virginia Roberts and what happened uh, with uh, uh, G uh, Max's house in London and her flat. So there's other outside information that makes these people look guilty. The fact that your name is on this book means nothing. Literally, it doesn't mean anything. It means that you at some point ran into J.E. And if you know anything about this guy, he was, you know, offering money up to uh, philanthropic organizations 
information. So a lot of scientists and people from every single field, actors, celebrities, everybody knew this guy. That doesn't mean that they're all, uh, you know, uh, uh, involved in this, this uh, some kind of pedophile ring, which is the QAnon line, which is absolute nonsense. It just means that at some point, these people ran into J.E. or Maxwell and had the misfortune of, you know, giving them their uh, their phone number. So, like I said, if you want to build a legal case against somebody, this particular document means literally nothing. And that's why I didn't I don't I didn't obsess over it. A lot of people in the media did because it's very sexy because a lot of people um, were in here. Bill Clinton, Trump, um, Tr uh, Ivanka Trump, Ivana Trump, Melania Trump, um, uh, Chelsea Clinton, you name it from both sides of the aisle that Republicans, Democrats, everybody's name was in here because uh, guess what? Uh, J.E. and Maxwell were trying to make connections with people for whatever reasons and they they were trading on favors. This is what rich people do. And I have a problem with this entire system, okay? Don't get me wrong. But if you want to go after these people for crimes they've committed, this is not a good way to do it. So this is me scrolling through the book. There's a lot of familiar names, unfamiliar names, just a whole bunch of people who um, who are close. Who are uh, uh, close. Some of them are close. Some of them were not close. They were just uh, acquaintances that they ran into at parties. But this is what rich people do. They develop Rolodexes so that pe they can get people, you know, get develop contacts so they can contact them, you know, when they need something. This is unfortunately how the elites op uh, operate. And that doesn't mean that all of these people were involved in child abuse. That's nonsense, okay? To believe that you have to live in a parallel world, and I don't. Um, I look at reality, and the reality is that this book doesn't really guarantee any kind of legal case against any of these people. But as I said before, if you have other evidence against these people, like we have here with Jean-Luc Burnell, who literally offered up a 16-year-old Russian girl uh, to uh, JE for sex, um, these are people you can go after. And, if, and as you all know, Jean-Luc Burnell is now in jail because of all the stuff that he did uh, in France and also with JE. So the people, you need more than the black book to build a legal case. That's my whole point. So that's my that's the bottom line for me when it comes to the black book. Your name appearing in it merely means that at some point you met this guy. Everybody who does who met with uh, JE or Maxwell is not guilty automatically. These these people were just around all these elite circles where all these parties happen and they made contacts with people that doesn't mean that you're guilty so if but some of these people are guilty in my opinion like the Dubins and also Jean-Luc Burnell so that's why there are separate cases being built against them and that's how you do it so you can start with a black book but this black book itself is not legal evidence of of guilt okay so just want to clarify that don't buy into the Q line it's a bunch of nonsense so with that being said, let us now move on to the Amazon book receipts, which had some very, um, let's say, kinky, for the lack of a better word, um, books in, that were ordered by a JE. Then this was this was found in a trash pull, I believe, by the authorities. And so let's go over some of the books that were listed here. Okay, so this is a, a blown up picture of the receipt, as you guys can see. It's an Amazon receipt to JE right here. That's his address, and the three books are uh, right here, S SM101, uh, Slave Craft and Training with Miss uh, Abernathy. We're going to go through and look at what these books are. This is this is like some silly stuff here, but it actually corroborates some of what the girls were saying about uh, the kinky stuff that he was into. So we got to look at this. This is just uh, a piece of evidence or more a much more convincing piece of evidence uh, than the black book. But anyways, uh, let's read a little bit into this. So the first book here is SM101, A Realistic Introduction. And uh, uh, the description, I got part of the description here. It says it goes by many names, bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, sadomasochism and more. In Jay Weissman's SM101, the long taboo subject of consensual sadomasochism is accurately insightful presented in the context of adult human sexuality, experience and tradition for the interested non-specialist general reader. SM101 surveys the entire spectrum of consensual sadomasochistic practices from bondage to spanking to erotic role playing and more. So and there's an uh, there's a section here I forgot to ex I forgot to expand on Amazon so I don't know what it said but you guys get the point. Uh, let's see the next one here. Slavecraft. 
Roadmaps for Erotic Servitude, Principles, Skills, and Tools. And this is the second book. The author of Ties That Bind joins forces with a uh, grateful slave to produce this gripping and personal account on the subject of consensual slavery, philosophical and intense. Uh, Slavecraft dares to delve beneath the surface of D slash S. I think that's dominance and submission. I think that's what that means, but I'm not sure. Relationships and give us an intimate and revealing view uh, from a rare perspective that of a slave okay so there's some weird stuff that i certainly don't uh recognize here um I'm kind of uncomfortable reading this, but nevertheless, this is part of the evidence. Training with Miss Abernathy, a workbook for erotic slaves and their owners, a comprehensive manual for those who are or wish to be erotic slaves. So this is very disturbing, and I didn't, really didn't want to go through this part, but it is part of the evidence, so we had to be professional about it. But um, this is this just adds to the you know the allegations against them about what they were into when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, what they were doing uh, in their leisure time when it comes to J. And Maxwell. Now, look, I'm a, I'm very European, so I'm not I'm not you know a prude about any of this stuff. I am not into this stuff. I don't get it. I don't understand how anybody derives any kind of pleasure from this stuff. But some people do. And if you're all adults and you're all consenting, this is perfectly fine. Do whatever you want in your free time. I don't care. The only problem I have is when minors are involved. That's the only time that the law should get involved, or you know people are being forced to do things that they don't want to do. But other than that. Feel free to do all kind of weird stuff in your own house. That's your that's your property. That's your problem. I don't care. Okay, so that's my perspective. You guys all know me. Um, I'm not a prude at all, so I don't care. But this actually adds. I mean, this doesn't make you look good when all the other allegations that have come around. Uh, when you look at all the other allegations against you, this doesn't actually make you look good that you are buying this stuff on Amazon. It just makes you look look uh, more guilty. So. Uh, this is what they say. This is what the lawyers say. This disturbing 2005 purchase uh, purchase corroborate Miss uh, Miss Virginia Roberts' account of being sexually exploited by the defendant and uh, J E. Not to mention the dozens of underage girls in the Palm Beach police report. Additionally, defendant testified that she was not with J E in 2005 and 2006 when he was ordering books on how to use sex slaves. However, record uh, record evidence contradicts that testimony. So we already went over this. Gillian Maxwell said that she hadn't spoken to um a je from 2002 to 2009 uh, or she said that she had she didn't speak to him that that much she she said oh um i spoke to him after his mother died in 2004 um but after that i didn't actually uh speak to him oh that's another correction that i made in my last video i accidentally said that um je's mom died in 2009 that's that's not true the correct correct date is 2004 okay so i corrected that. i put a correction under that video in the comment section but um i want to mention it here uh je's mother died in 2004 not 2009 so anyways um gill and maxwell will come up with some kind of reason to excuse this but anyways this does not make you look good okay Given the the other things that you've been in, been into, these book purchases don't make you look good. Okay, it, like if a regular person who's who didn't have the accusations against them that Je does, if they had this in their reading list, I don't really care, right? I wouldn't really think that there was anything weird. Although you know, like I said, everybody has to be consensual, and there can't be any minors involved. If that's the case, then I don't really care what you're reading. It's not my business. But in this case, J.E. is accused of much worse things than, you know, just being into some kinky sex stuff. But um, but this just piles on these 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 purchases from Amazon just pile on to the kind of mindset that J.E. had and also Maxwell, who was with him. So there you go. Um, next, uh, the, the last thing for this video the Thailand folder with um, defendant's phone number. So the defendant also was integral in arranging to have Virginia Roberts travel to Thailand. While Epstein had paid for a massage therapy session in Thailand, there was a catch. Uh, Gillian Maxwell told Virginia Roberts she had to meet young girls in Thailand and bring them back to the U.S. for Epstein and the defendant, Gillian Maxwell. Indeed, on the travel records and tickets defendant gave to Virginia Roberts, defendant wrote on the back the name of the girl Virginia was supposed to meet, and she was also instructed to check in frequently with the defendant as it was further uh, signified by the words, call Miss Maxwell at this particular number on Virginia's travel documents. In this case, Virginia also produced the hard copy record from her hotel stay in Thailand paid for by J.E. 
And uh, this is that particular picture. This is Virginia Roberts right here. Um, uh, call Miss Maxwell at that number. Use JoJo's cell phone to make the call. I'm guessing that's what it says right here. Okay. Basically, this has to do with the trip that was paid for by JE and uh, and uh, Maxwell um, that they offered to uh, Virginia Roberts for her birthday. Right. And she's talked about this in the documentary Filthy Rich. And she goes, well, Jeffrey and I, we want to have a baby. We want you to have the baby for us. But it's not really going to be your kid because we need you to sign over that child's rights to us. Uh, basically, the whole story, as she told it, was that um, she wanted to go and get her massage therapist uh, certificate and uh, and uh, and then come back and serve as a surrogate mother for um, Gil and Maxwell's baby. That's the story that she tells there um, in the uh, documentary. That's uh, Virginia Roberts' side. But I was afraid to say no. So I said, OK, well, you guys did promise me that I'd get an education so could you at least let me get my massage certificate and we'll do it. And not even a few weeks later, Jeffrey gives me these tickets booked to Thailand. Um, and he says, happy birthday. This is for you. You're going to go get a certificate. But anyways, um, this physical evidence was provided to the authorities by uh, Virginia Roberts to prove that Maxwell and uh, J.E. were in her life and were part of getting her to Thailand, where she, you know, ended up staying for and she broke off relations with uh, J.E. and Maxwell, which, uh, you know, J.E. was very mad about, uh, according to her. Um, but this is relevant to the case and... Uh, uh, important to cover. It's not the biggest piece of evidence, but it is a piece of evidence. And together with everything else, it paints a picture of exactly what kind of experience Virginia Roberts had with J.E. and Maxwell. Okay, so that that is the last piece of evidence we're going to look into today. That is it for part seven of the undisputed evidence against Ghislaine Maxwell. Hope you guys got something out of this video. Uh, the next video will go into further evidence, continuing on with this document. And uh, I want to finish finish this series off before the trial starts. So I want to be stepping up my Gillian Maxwell videos to get through this entire thing. So we have all the evidence on the record, or at least on my channel, you can have all the evidence on the record that people can review if they are interested when the trial is going on. Obviously, I'll be covering the trial myself every day um, that a significant break happens. But um, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want to support the show, you can do so on Patreon and also on channel memberships by clicking the blue join button below. And uh, as always, make sure you like and you subscribe and you hit the bell for future videos. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone.